our fastest wheels ever. Aeolus RSL are the new benchmark for fast, light, and stable aero road wheels. Aeolus wheels have always been fast, but the all-new Aeolus RSL wheels take it to an entirely new level. Aeolus RSL are not just faster, but off the charts faster, setting a new benchmark for fast, light, and stable aero road wheels. How did we do it? Supercomputers. In the past, design technology was limited to 2D modeling in a single plane, but today we run the whole design process in 3D. Now we can account for every gram of drag in every direction through every plane across all aspects of the wheel. We learn from every iteration, making each faster than the last for the fastest wheels we've ever made or tested. But we didn't stop there. Rolling resistance is the other key factor in real world speed. Testing proved that a 23 millimeter inner rim width could make the fastest shapes roll even faster, and they're perfectly suited for today's 25C and 28C tires. The wider profile means a smoother ride that rolls faster. More stability means less wasted energy in the crosswinds, and it all adds up to a faster U. The new Aeolus family isn't just an incremental improvement, it's a step change in speed. Aeolus RSL wheels are available only as tubeless ready clinchers, raced by Trek Segafredo and proven to be the fastest setup in the real world. OCLV carbon construction ensures the wheels are lightweight, ultra durable and meet the strictest quality standards, and they're laced to smooth rolling DT Swiss 240 hubs with Ratchet EXP. Riders can choose their depth to best suit their riding. Aeolus RSL 37s prioritize lightweight they're the best option for climbers like the Amanda Rider. Aeolus RSL 51 are the best all-around road wheel, balanced between weight, aerodynamics, and stability. Aeolus RSL 62 are ideal for the Modone Rider who wants the fastest road setup available. Aeolus RSL 75 is the perfect match for the time trial specialist or the triathlon racer. When the budget is tighter, Aeolus Pro Level wheels available in 37 and 51 millimeter depths and built using the same technology we use to develop RSL are the best bang for your buck. With Bontrager's two-year carbon care replacement program, you're covered if anything were to happen to your new favorite wheels and they're warranted for life. Aeolus RSL, faster wheels for a faster you. Hi, and welcome to the MY22 Aeolus Wheel webinar. My name is Graham Wilhelm, and I'll be your host today, along with Claude Dreyfel and John Davis here, super engineers, to talk deep wheels. Today, we're gonna to spend about 45 minutes going over what makes our new wheels the fastest wheels we've ever produced. We'll talk the R&D process that went in behind creating the wheels. We'll talk about the design of the wheels themselves. We'll also dig into the lab and ride testing behind validating that these shapes that we've created are the fastest we've ever developed. We'll bring in one of our chief test riders from Trek Segafredo to also discuss his experience in helping us to develop these wheels. Uh, speaking of Trek Segafredo, uh, did you guys watch the big race over the weekend? That's awesome. you know, yeah, Jasper Stoyven. It was an awesome race. Uh, it was, I didn't expect it, attacking at the bottom of the podium like he did. It was very Fabian Cancellara-esque. He held on for the win. One of the coolest parts about that, that race is he was on the new wheels. Um, it, was, it was pretty awesome. He, he, in fact, he chose a 75 in front um, and a 62 in rear. For you astute viewers out there, you'll notice that the front wheel pictured here is, is a tubular. Unfortunately, uh, midway through the race, he did uh, actually hit a pothole and popped his front tire, and the only replacement wheel they had for him on board was a tubular. But the fact that he started out with our new wheels in probably one of the most important one-day races of the year, I think is a testament to uh, how awesome these new wheels are. Um, just a reminder, we are having a Q&A session at the end of um, our discussion here. So if you just wanna scroll down on the screen, there's a little box, you can enter your questions in the bottom there or in the box there, and then we will address them at the end of the show. Um, also, one reminder is we, we do have an embargo on all the content we're sharing today. So please don't share any of this with the public until April 15th um, at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. 
Okay, before we dive in into how we got to where we are with the new wheels, uh, I wanna take a step back and just talk about our journey sort of through carbon aero road wheels over the years. So it all starts back in 2005. Um, with the introduction of the first Aeolus wheels. These were Steve had designed fairings bonded to our RXXL uh, wheels, carbon wheels that we produced out here. Um, very fast wheel for their time, especially compared to like a box sec section aluminum rim, but definitely left some on the table for improvements. Fast forwarding to 2013, we introduced our D3 line of Aeolus wheels. These wheels were designed using in-house CFD and we, we looked not only at the leading edge of the rim when we designed it, but also the trailing edge, because you know, that's a very important um, you know, part of the equation in the aerodynamics of a wheel. Taking a step forward a couple more years, we brought in tubeless technology to these wheels. And then moving down the road into 2018, that's when we, we really started to take a deep dive into not only what makes wheels fast, but also makes, what makes wheels rideable. So stability became a big thing. And uh, at the time, we also introduced our, um, our optimization software. Um, we'll go into a little bit more depth on that for this. But at the time, we, we did a, a 2D optimization um, and validated with 3D. Um, but for what we, what we were going for, we had a very fast wheel, yet also a very stable wheel, which is, is, is a pretty important thing, especially when you're riding in those crazy, crazy crosswinds. All right. So... Let's talk about the new wheels. And first, I'm going to bring in Claude Drafel here to talk, um, yeah, to talk the engineering he did. Claude, why don't you introduce yourself and tell him a little bit about your background? Yeah, I'm Claude Drafel, a wheel design engineer here at Trek. Uh, I was the lead engineer for the R&D portion of this project. And uh, yeah, I've been on the wheel team for seven years and started up in carbon manufacturing. So sort of uh, my focus over the years has been on carbon as well as aerodynamics. You started as an intern, right? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I started as an intern out in the factory. Oh, man, doing, getting coffee. <laughs> um, so tell me a little bit about the, the new wheels and sort of how you approach the design of these wheels. Yeah, so as you mentioned, we use an optimization process. And this is awesome because if you, we can define things in a smart way and basically send the computer after it. Obviously, that's a major simplification. But <laughs> so we start by creating a CAD model that we parameterize. So it includes tire size, inner rim width, outer rim width, rim depth, as well as some um, parameters to make the profile shaping of the rim. And with that, uh, basically, we build sort of the bike parts around that that are also critical. And then that's what goes into our simulation software. So basically, the computer can change any of the param parameters and mimic any sort of shape we'd want. Okay, awesome. So when you when you throw that model in and it sort of spits out its results, what what results are you looking for? What are the, the critical things that you're you want to know? Yeah, so you actually? mentioned uh, the speed stability shaping for a previous generation. So those are still two like key parameters. So we want to be fast and we want to be stable. Uh, the one other thing we plugged in this time is basically rolling resistance. I mean that's the, one of the next biggest sources of drag. So we wanted to see how that influences the, the fastest setup. Okay. And then, so for you guys, you, you, you're you looking at rolling resistance. You're looking at, I imagine, what inner rim width plays a role in that. And then, you know, what, what, what how did you guys end up landing on the, the size of tire that was sort of optimal for the race conditions that you were going after, as well as the inner rim width? Yeah, so for the previous generation, we basically said, okay, athletes are racing on 25C. Uh, it's a good setup. So we made the fastest system around that. But this time we said, what is the fastest system? Let's leave that completely open. And we um, started this project using the equipment we developed for the R3 tire. It's okay. the treadmill rolling resistance machine, which can you know realistically mimic rolling resistance in a controlled test. And we did a big test where we took different tire sizes, all with the same construction, different inner widths, and uh, different pressures. And we basically created the formula for changing all those variables. What does that mean for your rolling resistance? And uh, John will go a bit more into the optimization, but we could basically plug that in and it found the fastest system for aero and rolling resistance, sort of the balance of those two. Okay. And that ended up being 23 inner width with the 25C. Okay. Tire. Um, so like, you know, I've seen studies online um, that say, you know, as you increase inner width, you don't actually gain rolling resistance because you drop pressure to try and sort of match the comfort. 
you know, I mean, what would you guys say to that? What did, what did you guys look into with your analysis there? Yeah, so we did the same sort of tests, and it is true on like pushing the tire against a flat surface, the stiffness um, is more with the wider rim. So to match there, you'd want to drop pressure a bit. But we actually went a bit further, and we looked at what does that stiffness look like over like blunt objects as well as sharp objects. So let's say you're hitting things in the road, mm -hmm. and the difference isn't as big. So um, Really, we relied a lot on our test riders. We had people get out there and say, hey, what is fast? What feels fast? Gotcha. So, what, did you, what did you see with your test riders in terms of where they ended up with pressure versus where they sort of normally? I would say about half of our riders are sticking around the same pressure and okay. saying that it feels pretty fast, um, especially if people are on rougher roads. They are dropping pressure. And one benefit they like is the wider uh, rim width actually makes for a more laterally stiff tire, so you okay. can drop pressure if roads are rough and still a really good ride feel, so. Okay, awesome. Yeah, what have you been doing? You've also been- Yeah, so I, I sort of experimented around, but I settled in on just riding the same pressure that I would have ridden for the triple X wheels. Yeah. Um, I found that the, the extra speed, I like that feel, and besides T, highway T, for most part, <laughs> the roads around here have gotten better, you know, they've done a lot of work there, so. Um, no, yeah, I, I, I think that uh, I, I like I like it where it's at. And one interesting anecdote is we've heard from the team is a lot of the riders would end up riding at the same pressure as well um, that they would like, like say their their 19 and a half inner width home alloy clincher wheels yeah. because when they come off of tubulars they actually feel like that's the best way to sort of match that stiffness feel yeah, that a tubular sure. has, especially under like sprinting loads. So. Um, awesome. Well, thanks for that, Claude. Yeah. Okay, so we got the model set up, and then you hand it over to John Davis here. John, why don't you just introduce yourself and give everybody a little bit of your background? Yeah, I'm John. Um, I'm our, our aerodynamicist here at Trek. Uh, so that means I do the CFD, the computational fluid dynamics, um, which is our computer simulations of the airflow. I do wind tunnel testing, uh, velodrome testing, and on road aero testing as well. Um, I originally come from an aerospace background, but uh, I've been at Trek for about three years now. And yeah, this project was a lot of fun. Awesome. So Claude has this really powerful model that he sends over to you. Um, just talk through how you, how you set that up in your, how you bring that into your, your program or what program you're using to sort of analyze um, and yeah. get the results from that model. Yeah, so similar to the triple X wheels, we're using Heeds, our optimization software, uh, with a few key changes. Uh, one of them, Claude touched on a little bit, we're looking at the whole system. So um, before we were just looking at aerodynamic drag in Heeds, now we have the rolling resistance data in there as well. So what Heeds is, is um, you take a parameterized model uh, that can you can change those uh, variables like uh, inner rim width, tire size, things like that, and it'll automatically update the shape of the wheel. And then it connects to um, uh, all of our different software packages. So it'll connect to my CFD software. And for a given iteration, it'll calculate uh, the aerodynamic drag. It'll calculate the stability. It'll calculate things like aero torque. Um, and then it will also connect to uh, the rolling resistance data from the treadmill and the model that Claude built and give a rolling resistance estimate for that uh, wheel shape. And then it'll estimate the mass uh, of the wheel, the weight. Um, and then it'll fold all those up and uh, grade the wheel essentially against our two objectives, in this case, speed and stability. So the stability is coming from the CFD and the speed uh, is uh, basically the total power that it takes a rider to drive the wheel set for all, uh, over all the resistive forces, so the aero rolling resistance, uh, et cetera. And then, so that's one iteration. And then it learns from all those previous iterations uh, which wheels did well, which wheels didn't, and then it'll update the shape, make a new shape, uh, and just keep going and going and going. And it, it runs 24-7 for like months in this case, uh, which makes our jobs a little a little easier. We can let it run. Yeah, sounds like it. So I know in the previous generation, we, we used Heeds to develop those shapes. What was, what was the key difference between previous and current generation? Um, yeah, other than including the whole system, uh, rolling resistance in there as well into Heeds, uh, the other key difference was in the aero side. So uh, before we started out with 2D CFD, we would always validate our designs in 3D CFD. Um, and uh, we did that because we we're a little bit computationally limited, um, but computers have grown. We've invested a lot in our uh, supercomputer here at Trek and also cloud, compu cloud computing. Um, so what 2D CFD is, it's just 
simulating the airflow through one slice of the wheel, um, which is an okay assumption to start off with. Um, but it's really a better assumption for something like an airplane wing, something that's long, straight, and skinny. Um, like if you look at a cut through uh, halfway through an airplane wing um, and look at the airflow at that cut and then move a little bit down the wing, the airflow is going to be pretty much the same because the, the wing is pretty long. But a wheel is much rounder than a wing and <laughs> it spins more than a wing. Uh, and so it's, there's a lot of three dimensional stuff going on. So if you have the computational power and you can start with 3D from the start, uh, that really opens, uh, opens you up a lot to some better results when you complete the optimization. Okay. Thing you mentioned earlier, is it, does it help with like things like stability and aero torque and things like that? Yeah, so uh, stability, um, it's all about the, the flow separation off the wheel and um, the relationship with, between side force and yaw angle. And those uh, really have to, uh, those are really three dimensional effects. Um, and so what's on the screen now is um, the stability study from uh, our triple X wheel uh, uh, design that Claude did where um, there was a ride, he had a ride test with some experienced riders and uh, there were aero sticks equipped on the bikes. So that was a logging wind speed and yaw angle. Um, and that allowed us to compare those wind speeds and yaw angles to times when the riders flagged, hey, I'm feeling unstable right now, uh, I'm feeling twitchy. And uh, we were able to look at uh, when they flagged and uh, compare it to some of the theories at the time, which were maybe it has to do with when the, the wheel stalls. But really what we found was it's the, the change of side force. So, if you imagine when you're going um, in an open, if you're riding in an open farm area and there's a constant crosswind. Like Wisconsin. You, yeah, like <laughs> my weekend ride. Yeah. Uh, you feel, you can feel a crosswind, but you feel fine. Uh, you, you know it's there, but it's like some, like when a truck passes you yeah. uh, and it goes, it blocks that crosswind for a second. Then you feel kind of uh, sketchy because the, the side force goes down a lot because that crosswind got blocked and then you're all of a sudden in the wake of the truck where the yaw angle is changing a lot. So we really focused on reducing that change in side force that you feel that okay. connects to the stability feeling. That's awesome. So when Heeds is running, you know, how many iterations do you have to do to like start to converge on like usable results? Is it like 10, 100? It's like that, it's thousands. And that's originally why we started with the 2D uh, CFD. It let, let us get many more designs. Um, but uh, with 3D, we can still get those thousands of designs uh, with our more uh, with our uh, supercomputer, basically, that yeah. we have now. Um, Supercomputers. Yeah, we can get those thousands of designs that you need to really uh, nail the, the final design. Awesome. So you got, you got your computer running. Is it a couple months later it kicks out the sort of like your optimal designs? and then you down select from there, and then what's the next steps? Yeah, so then the next step is you, uh, you get your great computer results, but then you have to go to the wind tunnel. Um, and we went to the wind tunnel multiple times over the trip. Uh, we went to San Diego and, and Wichita State University wind tunnels. Um, and the wind tunnel results, they were uh, even better than we were seeing in the CFD, which is always great to see. Um, you get the stability uh, from the wind tunnel, and that was um, that was uh, uh, better than the triple X wheels for the given depth. But the, the part that uh, was really interesting to me is the aerodynamics. I like the kind of geeky aero details. Um, is that you usually have to have, there's a trade off between low yaw, so calm conditions, and, and high yaw conditions, so really high crosswind conditions. You have to choose one or the other for a wheel set. Um, but for this wheel set, we were able to reduce the drag at low yaw. Um, while also delaying that stall angle and improving the performance at high yaw, uh, which you can see in the plot on the screen now. Um, and so that was just great to see because um, it kind of validated how we did our heeds. We ran multiple uh, yaw conditions for each design, a low and a high yaw angle, and that really paid off in the end. Awesome. Thanks for that. Some great results there. Um, just a reminder. Uh, to drop your questions in the chat. Again, we'll, at the end of this, we'll go over uh, any questions that we have and uh, answer uh, those questions in further depth. All right, uh, let's go back to Claude. So you set up the model, you pass it over to John. John does this crazy CFD optimization analysis, gets these shapes, takes them to the tunnel, validates them, great results. So what are the next steps there? Like, 
Yeah, so we set up some calculators, which is pretty awesome because like the team will come to us and say, "Hey, how much will these wheel? How much faster will these wheels make me?" Or you'll come to me, maybe. So yeah, I'm like, I'm trying to improve my commute. I'm getting older. The young interns keep passing me on the way. In. Yeah, so we'll actually get to a few scenarios, but first I'll kind of just do a run through of uh, some of the tunnel results and overall speed results. So the new RSL wheels are significantly faster across the lineup, and uh, stability was a good improvement actually for each depth too. So looking specifically at the RSL 51, it's 16% lower for front wheel aero drag versus triple X4 will be 9% more stable. And for the RSL 62, it's 14% lower front wheel aero drag while being 8% more stable. So pretty awesome improvements there. Faster and more stable. <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> So yeah, let's uh, get to some of these scenarios. So with this race calculator, do you have anything uh, you'd like me to? Oh yeah, out? let's just say my commute. Like I'm trying to get in, like it, literally I got to beat the intern. There's Mount Marquette, I got to save some energy and just really smoke them up that. <laughs> my hour commute. Um, yeah, know, about, about how much time do you? Uh, uh, well, so about it's 20 miles and on a good day, I could do it in an hour. Okay. Like, when I'm yeah, so let's strong. put that in the calculator and uh, what wheels, what were you riding previously? Let's just say a triple X fours. Triple X4, okay, and uh, so now you'll be on the RSL 51. Mm -hmm. So with that setup, you'll be two and a half percent less power. So you could either use two and a half percent less power and go the same, uh, get there in the same amount of time, or else you'll be one percent faster. So I've just save up for the hill, <laughs> just just light them up. 30, 36 seconds on the hour. You can okay, say. and or I could just get in faster and get in the snack line quicker. <laughs> All right, so so I'm just sort of like an average Joe example. Um, let's start talking where it really matters. Let's say you're Ryan Mullen or, or one of our guys that we put on the front of a Peloton, you know, mid-race. What does it look like for them? Yes, yeah, so we set up the same calculator with basically the old tubular setups they were mm -hmm. on. And then if they switch to the new tubeless tires. And uh, with that setup, if you assume he was on triple X4 tubulars previously and switching to the RSL 51s, uh, they'll gain 4.3 watts for aero savings and 2 watts for rolling resistance for a total of 6.3 watts or about 1.8%. So in the okay. same, similar kind of 2% total power savings range. And, and that's big for them. All, yeah, every little point, you know, one of a percent, I mean, matters at that level. That's yeah. pretty cool. Well, so Jasper gets the big win. Yeah. You know, they released his power numbers. Um, what do you have, like over 1,500 watts max at one point. <laughs> it's insane. You know, in a sprint, somebody's putting 1,500 watts, let's say like Mads, where do they end up with that? Yeah, so we specifically uh, kind of put together a scenario for Mads sprinting with 1500 watts. And, uh, you know, he's one of the deeper wheel riders. So, say he was previously on the triple X6s and he's going to the uh, RSL 62s, there would be uh, overall 2.3% power savings with that setup and uh, aero savings of 30.6 watts and rolling resistance of 3.3 for a total of 34 watts. Uh, but what's really cool is you can imagine. The actual scenario that's happening here, right? So he's actually 0.8% faster. So if you look at him sprinting for 200 meters, that would basically put him 1.6 meters ahead of where he would have been with the Which whole wheels. Which is big because I, there's, I think, two races last year where he lost by yeah, less than that. Just so hair. Um, should have had the new wheels. I <laughs> get the victory. Uh, speaking of Mads, um, we actually were fortunate enough to be able to reach out to Mads and get his take on the new wheels. So let's turn it over to uh, Mads and Jacob, and uh, let's get get his thoughts. So, Mads, you're one of the original riders to be testing these wheels. How have you been finding them so far? Yeah, so far I tried the uh, the 51, the 62, and uh, the 75 wheel, and it's some pretty nice wheels. I rode the the 50 uh, 51s for a while at home, and they are really, really nice. Like with the rough roads we have in Denmark, uh, they're still comfortable and, and it feels really, really fast. And then with the, yeah, with the bigger tie on, uh, then it's a, a super nice wheel set. Um, yeah, the 62, I, I tried for, for some races now and I really enjoy the, the, the tubeless version of, of the wheel. And uh, yeah, like the old XXX six wheels was super fast, but this one just feels so much faster. And uh, yeah, of course I want the fastest possible option. So that's why I'm I'm already, or, or that's why I'm already racing the the 62 wheels with the tubeless version. So 
super nice wheels and and the 75 you only have uh, one set so far so tried it for some training rides and so on and let's say it like this the other guys can't keep up when we when we start rolling on the big wheels so super super nice job from from bond trigger this time and, and the wheels are amazing have you been racing them already like these bad boys i've been riding for uh, paris nice uh, only uh, the 62s uh, i'm i only did this uh, these stages on them and i really enjoy them in the race the 50 51 i had for a while at home like since yeah off season came so i've been riding a lot on, on those wheels and and the feeling on them are super super nice like i can't wait to to race the classics on these wheels and find the perfect setup for for the yeah for the tires and and so on because i truly believe that this is the best wheels on the market so yeah soon everyone is racing these wheels and then uh, the whole team will go even faster than we did before talking about details of the wheels what's the one specific thing you like the most about them Ooh, that's a difficult one i like everything about the wheels but the sound is super nice i like the sound from a high wheel and uh, yeah, the sound is giving something extra. So if I have to pick one thing, it will be the sound. Second thing would definitely be the speed. And talking about the speed, do you feel they they really feel different from from the last wheels? Yeah, also because on the old wheels we were riding uh, riding tubulars and, and now we ride tubeless on, on the new one. So of course, it's a bit of a difference there also. But it also makes a difference on the wheel. It's not only the, the tires and so on, it's also the wheel is it's different and, and it feels a bit more stiff and also a lot faster. Uh, the rim is wider than than the old XXX6. So this we also feel for sure. And it feels, yeah, the whole wheel feels faster and, and also a bit more stiff. Uh, as a classics rider, the crosswinds are your bread and butter. So have you had a chance to see how they feel in the crosswinds yet? Yeah, the, the 51s, they, they are high, but still stable and super nice wheels in the, in the crosswind also. So if you want an all round wheel set, you should definitely get the 51s because they can, they can do everything. Would you say the 51s are your favorites or do you like to mix and match? I like to make a match like it's a if if I have to pick one wheel set I will definitely go with the 50 ones uh, but I'm also a guy who likes the high wheels so I need a set of the 75 at home also that's for sure just to <laughs> to go high and and get a really nice sound when I'm, I'm go for my training rides but uh, yeah it really depends on the day and which kind of race we have to do what uh, what wheel I would choose in what kind of race scenario or conditions could you imagine using the 75 wheel set? Like a sprint stage, I will definitely go for for the 75. Uh, if it's even with crosswind, I will at least go with the 75 back wheel and the 62 front. Um, but yeah, of course, the, the 75, it's a high wheel. It's also a little bit heavier than the other wheels. So a mountain stage wouldn't be the best option to ride those wheels but flat days with the sprint i will definitely go on the the 75s the new range of wheels have a uh, inner width of 23 mil which is significantly wider than than you're used to so is that something you can feel when you're riding them yeah definitely that's what i meant earlier with the the width of the the wheel is it's wider than before and this this you feel and you also see like the old xxx had more like a b shape on on the rim and this is more like a, a u like this so yeah it's more comfortable but also like the tire is more comfortable because it's it's going full out to the rim and you have a you, have, you know a straight line through the rim and the tire so it's more comfortable but also a lot faster you don't have any drag in in the in the gap between the rim and the, and the tubular what kind of tire pressures are you rocking on these bad boys? I'm pretty sure I'm going six and, and 6.3. Um, so six in the front and 6.3 in the back because uh, 
yeah my ass is a little heavy so i need some more air in the back wheel but uh, yeah with the tubeless we can go less pressure and uh, pressure and still have the same uh, yeah speed and, and rolling rolling resistance so why not be more comfortable and faster do you know what those figures are for uh, american friends in psi i have no idea in europe we use bars and uh, that's what i'm they can figure it out yeah it's 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 your job not mine <laughs> um and does it mean you can use a different tire pressure than before with the the old triple x wheels yeah like i said we can go low on pressure and be more comfortable uh, but I, th I think for the classics it's it's really nice because we can go even lower in pressure in in pressure and still have the same uh, rolling resistance so it would be more comfortable and a lot faster on the cobbles and we still go fast on on the normal roads so i think the tubeless on these wheels it's a super nice combination uh, so i've heard the engineering team at trek have been looking at the numbers and for a guy like you they estimate that you can save 35 watts in a sprint what does that mean for you when you're coming into a bunch sprint yeah definitely a lot uh, in these sprints like five watts can can change a lot so if i can save 35 watts on just the wheels then uh, it's it's pretty nice and a solid uh, job by the engineers at the, the trek and bunch trek so yeah they did a really good job again and to have a wheel set like this that where we save so many watts in in a full sprint it, it means a lot and it makes us you know, more confident in, in winning races. Uh, your season's off to a flyer. Could you talk talk us through a little of your experiences so far this year? How's it been going for you? Like the wheels of the season? The season, like your, your performance, you're happy so far? Yeah, like I'm, I'm super happy so far. Normally I'm I'm not super well in the, in the beginning of the season. It takes a while before I'm, I'm in gear, but uh, this year I uh, changed a bit and um, I was super motivated to do really good already from the from the first races of the season so um, I'm really happy with the yeah with the season so far and, and also with the you know one win already and then yeah it's looking good for the classics and, and the whole team is doing really nice so for me and, and the team it looks pretty good for the next cobblestones uh, races. Speaking of the classics they are on the horizon which one are you most looking forward to i'm really looking forward for for Roubaix this year um of course the other classics it's super important also and i'm, I'm looking forward to do them also but Roubaix is just something special for me and i'm i'm really looking forward to it also with the equipment we have i believe we have the best equipment on market for for that race so yeah it makes it even nicer to to do it and um uh, yeah, this I'm looking forward to and, and try out the new wheels and on cobblestones also uh, with the Domani. It's going to be a, a good combination, I think. Which wheel set do you think you'll use for Roubaix? Well, I'm like 95% sure I will use the 62 wheels, but uh, I will definitely try out the 75 also to, to yeah, if there is a big difference and yeah, if I can, you know, gain some recovery on the watts with the 75 then i'm gonna do it yeah you can run some tests on the recon yeah i will do a recon and, and run some tests for for tire pressure and also for for the wheels because yeah the 75 is a it's a pretty stiff wheel set and can maybe be a bit too much for for cobblestones already 62 it's some guys will say it's on the limit for for cobblestones like this so to make it to 75 maybe that's a bit too much but uh, we will see what's your prediction for flanders this year oh yeah it would be tough like you see how how high the level is in the peloton and uh, a lot of contenders for the for the win and and the finals are it's a lot of people there so it would be really hard and and a tough race, but uh, I truly believe we have a strong team, and with the team with the team we have here, I really believe that we can do a super nice final and and also aiming for the win. And what's the 
biggest group you can imagine arriving at the finish line of Flanders together? In Flanders, let's say maximum, maximum 25 riders. It's not a bad size for you. No, if, if we come to the finish line with 25 riders, uh, for sure Jasper is there, also hopefully Eddie. And uh, it's a pretty decent lead out for, yeah, for a final like that. So hopefully, yeah, we can hope it would be like this. I wouldn't mind if we if we go to the finish line in a, in a smaller group. So to wrap things up, um, did a ton of work, uh, a lot of R&D, a lot of testing to go into the new MY22 ALS wheels. Um, we have a really good lineup uh, to add to what we did last year. So at the shallower end, what we introduced last year was the RSL 37 wheel. This year new is the RSL 51, 62, and 75. And also this year new will be the AOS Pro 51. The AOS Pro wheel is a great wheel for those more budget-minded riders. And the great thing about the new AOS Pro 51 is it actually shares the exact same rim shape as the RSL 51. So from a speed and stability perspective, uh, it's a great all around wheel set um, for, yeah, for road. So um, I get the final thing I'll say here too, is that is our wheels pair nicely with our bikes. You know, you have the Amanda bike on the, the lighter end of the spectrum. So you have 37 or 51, great wheel for that. The Madone, it's really, it's really 51 and up. And then of course, on um, for the Domani, you know, you're looking more of a shallower wheel, a 37 or even a 37 V if you want that higher volume tire. Um, two final reminders here is we do have a awesome warranty for our wheels. They are warrantied for life for manufacturer defects. And we have a great program called Carbon Care. If a rider is to damage uh, their wheels for the first two years of ownership, Trek will cover it free of charge so that's a really awesome program just to give just to give you know people confidence that they're they're buying a solid product and we, we stand behind it all right let's go to the questions you guys ready yeah. uh, there's gonna be some hard ones <laughs> out of what i'm calling it. all right so first question here is is it true that the new rsl 62 is deeper than the triple x6 but performs better in crosswinds deeper yet more stable so how is that how 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 how's it happen? Well, I'm gonna go to John. Well, it is true. Uh, the uh, the 62 is definitely deeper um, and more stable. And the way that we got there uh, is really heeds um, having that thousands of designs focusing on stability uh, obviously helps. But then another great thing about heeds is you know we kind of describe it as hey we hit go we walk away we go ride our bikes and then we come back and the wheels designed for us. There is some uh, some digging down into the data that Claude and I do. And so for stability, for example, uh, what HEADS lets you do is look at the different parameters um, that set up that CAD, that shape that Claude made, and how they all uh, correlate to each other. So um, which one is the most important for side force, and how does it connect to the other parameters in that CAD model? And so we were able to dig down into that uh, data and see, OK, you know, this, uh, the trailing edge shape is really important for stability. Um, let's maybe redirect the heads a little bit uh, where it's going and focus a little bit more on stability for um, this wheel. And that's kind of how we're able to get that. That's awesome. So yeah. as heads is running, it's doing its own thing to try and, you know, intelligently iterate. But you guys also step in and sort of see where it's at in the process and, and redirect based on some of the things it finds. Yeah, so we can kind of blend our intuition um, wow. with the the magic of our computer as well. <laughs> um, all right. Oh, this was, this is a clock question here. Um, what's the minimum tire size? Um, let's answer that one first. What's the minimum tire size for this one? Yeah, so with the new inner width, we recommend 25C as the minimum tire size, okay. just for that inner rim width to tire size ratio. Gotcha, okay. And the, that's the same size? They're optimized for. I mean, yeah, as we talked about through the optimization, like it could choose any tire size and yeah. it came out with 25C being the optimal. Um, we did look at 28C as well. We talked about that a little bit and uh, potentially putting that on the rear can be a pretty fast setup too. Gotcha, gotcha. But there's still, I, I've heard that you guys did test the 28C in the wind tunnel and it was still pretty good, all things considered. Yep, yeah. we put the 28s and the 25s on all these um, and just to make sure, you know, 
if you put on 28s, you're not gonna go super slow. Uh, the drag, since we're optimized around 25s, the drag does increase a little bit, um, but not not that much. And you also can potentially get a rolling resistance benefit with the 28s. So gotcha. there's that balance. There. What if I just want to be wild and I just was like, I'm doing 75s with a 40C gravel tire. Is that, I mean, 40C tire, 45, is that okay? Yeah, so we don't. I mean, used road tires, we don't yeah. really have an upper limit. Obviously the aerodynamics are gonna get yeah, yeah. way worse, but you know, people can do whatever the they spot, want. Especially <laughs> if you get older, you got no speed or skill anymore. You just gotta, you gotta have a nice looking bike. Um, okay, next question here. Do the new models essentially share the same rim shape profile scale to different depths? Or are there some bigger changes from size to size? Who wants that one? I, I could take that one. Okay. <laughs> this is a really good question. Um, because I mean, I could go really into depth on the aerodynamics on this one because you can't just scale the shapes um, and get those same results. But um, I guess talking more about heads. So what you get out of heads, you don't just get uh, one optimal shape. Otherwise, we'd just be you know making one RSL wheel. Um, so you get a Pareto front, it's called, of optimal shapes, um, and these uh, will mainly be depth changes. So. Uh, we're looking at our two objectives for speed and stability. So uh, there are some wheels that are going to be uh, much more stable and less fast. And there are other wheels that are going to be much uh, less stable and more fast. And then there are wheels in between. And those shapes uh, form that Pareto front. And they're all different from each other and they're all optimized separately. And those shapes are on the Pareto front are what this lineup is. So 37 all the way to the 75 all lie on that Pareto front and they're all separately optimized. It's not like we just did one and then scaled it up and down. Okay. Uh, so if the pro level has the same shape, what's the difference in any other depths of the pro level? I, I'll take that one. Um, I, the, the biggest difference between the pro and the RSL level wheels is, is going to be weight and hub spec. Um, the weight of the wheels, I want to say per depth, we have an ALS Pro 37 and an ALS Pro 51 now. Um, it's about 200 grams, I believe, on the wheel set weight. I'm probably going to, somewhere around that. Um, and then also the hub spec. The DT Swiss hubs that come on the RSL wheels are a, technically they're a 240-180 hybrid. Um, we call them 240 just because that's that's sort of the closest thing they are versus on the pro level wheel it is a dt350 hub with the um the older drive mechanism so quite a bit better hub on the rsl and then the weights really the weight savings is in the rim mm -hmm. where it matters the most is, is quite a bit lighter um, wheel set. is there a reason why the rsl 37 has a narrow inner rim width yeah, I can take that one. So for the RSL 37, we were optimizing that for the Monda and, and really weight was sort of the biggest thing. So for that, just by having the slightly narrower inner width, um, there's a little less focus on aerodynamics, a little bit more on weight, and we ended up with the narrower inner width. Yeah, if I recall, it was something like, I think it was like, was it 30 grams for the wheel set savings between different widths? Yeah. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're starting to push toward the yeah. bottom end, I mean, every gram counts, you know, I always say that. Anyway, <laughs> um, did you look at front rear specific rim width shapes? We didn't look at that for, uh, for this optimization, no. no. Um, we find that uh, these, the same shape actually works really well on the wheel set. Um, we, I just got back from a wind tunnel test where we put the, the whole wheel set in a, in a bike and uh, compared that to the front wheel only data. And it's still pretty fresh, so I'm not going to uh, say any numbers, but the wheel set did better than we expected when we look at just the front wheel only. So the rear wheel is really helping us a lot there. Uh, so having that same shape um, across both front and rear, the, they're still working really together uh, yeah. as a wheel set. And I think two points to add to that. We do sell our wheels individually. So we don't sell sets, we sell front and rear separately. Um, so people can mix and match. And anecdotally, we are finding, especially with the team, the sort of the the first power users of these wheels that they are mixing and matching. I mean, the Asper started with the 62 on front, the 75 on the rear, and Milan San Remo, um, because they find that the, that's sort of the best balance between speed and stability for the, the complete bike setup. So. Oh, any plans to build your own wind tunnel? 
LOL. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John, we gotta get out. We got it back. I saw they took down the health clinic back there. Maybe yeah, let's just get some plywood. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, we got no plans uh, for that. Um, we are working really well with uh, Wichita State and, and San Diego and constantly improving their tunnels. Um, and we get really good. I mean, the Wichita State, for example, it's a university tunnel and uh, they're constantly looking at their flow quality. They're constantly working with aerospace companies um, and uh, a lot of other industries as well as us uh, at how to improve and their data quality. and. You know, if we built our own wind tunnel, we'd obviously make it as, as great as we possibly could, but I, you know, I don't think it can be having uh, a real industry leading wind tunnel gotcha. uh, like Wichita State or Just San Diego. Way down in the weeds with this question. You have two different wind tunnels. How do you compare and contrast results between the two? Yeah, we've done a lot of work. Uh, when we uh, were initially looking at uh, all the different potential wind tunnels, we benchmarked them all against each other. Um, and against our other data sets from CFD, Road, Velodrome, um, and San Diego and Wichita State, they matched really well. They matched to what we see um, from our other data sets. Um, and we know that their flow quality is good from their, um, from their own studies. So that's why we chose those two. Very cool. Okay, uh, what the heck is Aero Tor? <laughs> Yeah, I kind of glossed sure, over, over that. <laughs> uh, so aero torque is um, the wheels, uh, the, the fluid's resistance to spinning, uh, the wheel spinning. So it's kind of hard to think about in air, but if you took your brand new RSL wheel set and you brought it into your pool, because we all have pools, um, <laughs> oh, yeah. and started spinning it up to your uh, riding speed, it would be really hard to get it up to that speed because the, the, the water's there. Um, you get that same kind of resistance in the air, it's just less so. Um, it's still a sizable portion of the total aerodynamic resistance from the wheel, about a quarter of that. Um, it's a lot less sensitive to these design changes that we're making. Most of our gains are definitely coming from that, uh, the traditional translational track, but since we were looking at um, that total system performance, the, the whole wheels, um, rolling resistance, aero weight, uh, we included that in there. Um, just to, to see what that would do. And with the uh, 3D optimization, you were actually looking at that as well, right? So that was part of the total power equation. Yeah, yep. So that was in the heads. Since we have our wheels spinning uh, in 3D, uh, you're able to do, you can't do that in, uh, in 2D, obviously. So. Gotcha. And when you're in the tunnel, you spin the wheel and do all that stuff too, right? Yeah, so the tunnel wheel spinning. Um, yeah, yeah. It's always spinning <laughs> when you're riding, your tunnel, your CFD. Um, all right, it looks like that is all the questions for today. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us today um, on our deep dive into the MY22 ALS wheels. Um, have a great rest of your day or evening, wherever you are in the world, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, bye bye. Finally, is there anything else you would like to ask me? To ask you? Yeah. Can I cut your hair? Maybe at the classics. If you win one of the big classics, you can come ahead. Okay, deal. What is a big classic? Uh, any of the World Tour classics. Okay. So if I win any of the World Tour classics, I'm going to cut Jacob's hair on camera. Yeah, but you've got to actually try to do a good job. Yeah, I will. Okay. I will. I will Don't do... just like take no, it. No, 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 no. <laughs> I will do, I will try to do a good job.